and welcome to the Art of Being Human. I think today I decided that I would look at arthritis as a chronic illness because many people have it. As you get older, you're bound to have it. You know, and people get really uh, in a lot of pain with it and they have trouble walking, they have trouble standing and you'll ask them how they're doing. Oh, it's just my arthritis, it's just my arthritis. Every time we get a pain when we're older, we just assume that arthritis is the cause of it. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. But it's certainly worth taking look at because of the problems that it gives people. There are different types of it, there are different symptoms of it, there are different treatments for it. So let's begin with what a, a definition of what it is. Arthritis is the inflammation of a joint. It can be many joints, several joints, but it's the inflammation of joints. There's pain, there's swelling, there's stiffness, there's redness, and it's not a single illness because there are different types of it. There are different causes to it, but it all does the same thing. It, it influences the joints. And uh, it can be just one joint, it can be many joints, it can be mild not hardly noticeable, or it can be severe with, with deformities of the finger. You see people with arthritis, with rheumatoid arthritis, and their joints are all twisted up, and their hands are all twisted up, and they have really terrible, terrible pain with it. So I want to go into the types and the causes of arthritis. There is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is called degenerative joint disease. And it's the most common type. And we get it actually because of wear and tear in our joints. We have no idea how much wear and tear we have in our joints and what we do. And of course, being a musician, I'm interested in it because we can get overuse syndromes, arthritic symptoms, and pain due to the fact that we've overused the joints. If you're playing an instrument, if, if any particular instrument, you're using joints for that instrument over and over and over again for years and years and years. And as a result, the joint deteriorates and you get a lot of pain. Excuse me, for piano players, they're always pushing their hands down and their wrists are involved. With flutes, they're always holding their flutes up and so you get shoulder injuries. So, and with other instruments, it's other injuries. But at any rate, it's wear and tear. It usually starts in middle age and uh, it gets worse as time goes on because you're not going to stop using your joints. You just keep using them and using them and using them. Then there's rheumatoid arthritis. Arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is the most severe, and it's an inflammatory joint disease, and it's also an autoimmune disorder. An autoimmune disorder is when your body attacks itself. When your immune system is so strong that it overcomes your natural body and it starts attacking your body, that's an autoimmune disorder. And there's a lot of illnesses that are basically autoimmune uh, diseases. Diabetes is sometimes considered to be an autoimmune disease. I had a friend of mine say, well, if you're diabetic, it's because you have a poor immune system. And I said, that's not true. It's just the opposite. If you have diabetes and it's an autoimmune disease for you, it's because of the fact that your immune system is so strong that it can overcome the natural balances of the body and attack the beta cells in your pancreas, which produce insulin. So it's a strong immune system that causes a problem because it overtakes the body and overtakes what naturally would occur in your system and destroys it. So uh, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune uh, disorder and uh, the immune system works against the joints and against the tissue around the joints and gives a terrible pain of rheumatoid arthritis. And there are many joints, especially the hands, the feet, the arms, that are affected by that. And they, and they become painful. These joints become painful. They become stiff. They become deformed. And you've probably seen elderly people with rheumatoid arthritis, and their hands aren't right. You can see that there's a distortion in their hands. Now, another type of, uh, of uh, arthritis is called Stills disease. 
S-T-I-L-L apostrophe S. This is a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis for children, and it usually begins before the age of four, and it's very painful, but it usually clears up after a few years, but a person, a child, will have it for a few years before it finally clears, but it causes stunted growth and some deformity. So even though you don't think of young children having rheumatoid arthritis, sometimes they can. There's arthritis that just attacks children, very young children, and gradually clears up with age. Now another form is seronegative arthritis. You don't hear too much about seronegative arthritis, but it causes symptoms of arthritis, but blood tests are negative. A lot of times you see there are markers in the blood when you have arthritis, and they can take a blood test and they know what kind of arthritis you have and how bad it is. But but with this kind of arthritis, you've got the symptoms, but the blood doesn't show any, any change. The blood doesn't show any causative effect for it. But it is associated with some other illnesses. It's associated with skin disorders like psoriasis. It is associated with intestinal disorders like Crohn's disease. And it is also considered to be connected with other autoimmune disorders. So that's seronegative arthritis does exist. Then there's another kind of arthritis called infective arthritis. It's also called septic arthritis. And this is a joint disease due to the fact that bacteria has somehow gotten into a joint. It could be from a blood infection or it could be from a wound or something like that, an accident, and the joint becomes hot and painful and swollen, but this is due to bacteria getting into the joint itself. Infective arthritis. Then you have gout. Gout is extremely painful, and it's a form of arthritis, but it hasn't got to do with the weather. Usually people who are arthri arthritic will tell you when the pressure goes down, that's when they feel the symptoms the most, like before a storm. I had a friend of mine who had arthritis. I think it was rheumatoid. She says, I can tell you what the weather's going to be for the next two or three days. By the length of time, when my body starts aching, I know how many hours it's going to be before the storm hits. I can also tell you if it's going to be a quick mover or not. And she could predict the weather for me. And I used to say, okay, Alice, what's the weather going to be tomorrow? Well, we are going to have a storm, but I don't think until the evening. And it, she judged it by the time that it took her body to respond to the lower pressure. You always get falling in low pressure before storms. When the storm clears up, the pressure gets high again. When the pressure is high, a a lot of the symptoms of arthritis will go away. There won't be so much pain. But as, that, as the pressure is dropping before a storm, then you get the pain, and it's serious. So, uh, but gout doesn't act that way. Gout acts in accordance to what kind of acid you have in your system. If you have an excess of uric acid, uric acid is a waste product of the human body. And what it does, if you have too much of it, it gets in the joint and it crystals, it, it forms crystals, and then you get pain from that. So it's not so weather responsive, but it is responsive to the amount of uh, uric acid you have in your system. I can um, remember when I had gout, once in a while I get it, but it's very, very sharp. You feel like if, you're, if you have in your feet, you feel like you're walking on glass. Uh, like somebody broke a glass or something. So there are shards of glass and you're walking on those shards of glass. And I can remember it was like in December there or in the fall, I was at a game or a parade with my twin sister and I said, we've got to stop. I've got something in my shoe. I can feel it. It feels like I'm walking on glass. So when we get back to my car, I took off my shoes and lo and behold, there was nothing there. When I went to my family physician, he said, you know, gout is something like it will affect your earlobes. You can even have pain in your earlobes, and I do get that occasionally if I have gout. It can also affect the heart. It's very, very painful. You see comedies where people have got their legs and their feet all wrapped up because they've got gout and it's painful and they're in a wheelchair. And uh, so that's the way it's depicted in some kinds of shows, but it is painful. The way to help it the most is to 
stay on a diet in which you don't get excess uric acid and your doctor would give you a list of things that you can eat to help avoid it, a list of things that you need to stay away from to help you avoid it. And that is a big help. Once you know what you can eat and what you can't eat, your body responds to that. But it causes inflammation and it causes pain and the pain is serious, but it's a type of gout that's not affected by the weather. Now, there is a type of, of arthritis, and it's not common, but it's called ankylosing spondylitis, and I want to get into it. I want to get into it because even though people say it's rare, about 1% of the people have it, it is a type of arthritis. Uh, even though it's supposed to be rare, I keep running into people that have it. One of my friends died of it, but he died because he got into an accident. So I need to explain what it is. It's arthritis of the spine where the joints become inflamed and then they start fusing. And the, it affects the joints between the vertebrae and the cause is unknown, but it usually starts in as young adulthood, late teen, early early adulthood or ages between 20 and 40 and it seems to run in families and it starts off with discomfort in the lower back and when you check it uh, the pain and the stiffness gets worse after you've rested a lot of people rest when they have pain and they feel better but this gets worse after you've rested that's one of the clues that this is the type of arthritis you have it also causes pain in the chest between the spine and the ribs any joint and it can cause eye pain because it causes inflammation of the iris in the eye and it leads leads to permanent stiffness, a limitation of movement, and a curvature of the spine, and the movement is restricted. Now I want to show you something. I have here a template. I'll put it over here. This is a template of the human body. What's good about it? Maybe I should hold it over here. You can take, it has many little joints in it. So you can take this and you can move it so you can position it. So if a person was running or standing still or jumping, you can make it move in all different directions. It's bending over, you know, and you can move it so that you can get the human body in different positions and it would be natural. And you can use it for art so you get a, an idea of the relationship of the forms together. At any rate, this is it. It's a template. And what I've done is I've taken some photocopies of this template and showed you what happens during ankylosing spondylitis. So here's a template, and, and this came with it. This drawing came with it. The different positions that you can put it in so that you can get an idea of the form of the body and what it looks like in various positions, sitting, standing, running, bending over, and so forth. It's very helpful if you're doing artwork. But here's the template. I took a photocopy of it with a person supposedly just standing there. And since the template is green, I decided just to do it, you know, to do it as, a, as it is in the color so you could see it better. So there he is, standing as he is. And then an ankylosing spondylitis, as the, as the hips start to stiffen and the bones fuse, the person starts to bend over. When they first get the illness, they uh, try to sleep on some kind of a plank, a very, very flat plank, and keep their back straight, laying on their backs and sleeping in that position so that they can keep the back straight as long as they can. But it's inevitable. As they go about their life, they're going to have more pain and the body's going to start to bend. And it's going to, as the, as the uh, bones start to fuse together, you'll, you'll start to bend. And eventually, you'll get to the point where you are actually walking almost in a 90 degree angle. You've seen people, probably, I've seen them, where they bent over. Now, there are different degrees of it. You can bend a little and a little more and a little more. So if I could take this template once again, I'm going to try to get it standing. This is an older one, so it doesn't move 
as well as it used to when I first got it. But here I've got it standing. Maybe if I put it over here by the, yeah, I've got it standing. But then as the bones fuse, you start to bend a little bit. See, he's bent a little bit. Then he bends a little more. And as the years progress, you bend more and more until finally you're almost at a 90 degree angle. And the, and the picture that I have of the temple is of a 90 degree angle. And sometimes you'll see people who are walking and they're all bent over. And this is what's happening. That's probably what they have is this ankylosing spondylitis. Now, one of my friends is a psychiatrist and um, his son had it. And he was explaining to me what happens. As the bones fuse and the body tends to go, you know, tip over, it tends to bend over, there are periods of time when you can briefly lose consciousness. Now, in the medical books I've looked at, it doesn't mention that. But that's what he was telling me, and I'm sure he knows. You can, for a brief second or two, lose your consciousness, and then it comes back. It seems to be during an advanced state of this illness. Illness. Now his son, who was a young man in his 20s, and that's usually when it hits, he was going skiing. And it didn't seem to him that that was any kind of a problem, but he lost, he was going fast. He lost his consciousness for a second or two and, and skied right into a tree and died. So it is dangerous. But, and it's permanent. There's no fix for it. That back's going to fuse, the bones are going to fuse, the bending is going to occur, and it's going to be like that permanently. Now, I don't know how far the bending gets. I can't imagine it would get much more than a 45-degree angle, but I'm not sure about that. I've seen people walk like that at a 45-degree angle. That's ankylosing spondylitis. It has a lot of complications, eye problems, pain in the chest, and, uh, and not being able to, you know, not being able to function, you wouldn't be able to drive, you wouldn't be able to do anything because of the fact that you can't straighten out your body. You know, we take for granted the fact that we can stand up straight. But it's terrible for those who can. And, and I've seen people whose heads are bent forward, but not their body. And I don't know what condition that is, but it's a serious thing. So that's ankylosing spondylitis. People tend to bend forward, and when you're first diagnosed, as I said before, you lay flat on a board when you're sleeping to keep the back straight. I wondered about using back braces, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. When those bones fuse, you're going to start to bend, and uh, you can get into serious problems with it. It's painful. It's very, very, un very, very unfortunate. Now, as far as treatment is concerned, uh, met, there are many specific treatments for various types of arthritis. Blood tests can confirm the fact that you have arthritis. The bones can be ref can be fused together. I had a friend of mine who had his spine and they fused the bones medically. They did it and it, it helped him with pain, considerably with pain, because he was always getting pain and they thought that would help him. Now, of course, once the bones are fused, you have like one single bone in your spine instead of the several vertebrae that bend. But it does seem to help with the, the spine, except you can't move. You don't, have, uh, you don't have the ability to make a lot of movements because of the fusing of the spine. Joints can be removed. Artificial joints can be put in. You can get artificial hips, knees, finger joints, shoulder joints, arth and arthroscopic surgery can be used to help you. Sometimes a surgeon will use a scope and he can see the joint from the inside uh, that rather than from the x-rays, and then he can operate inside the joint without leaving a large scar. There are medications. People use, uh, use gold shots for it. I've heard of 
of people using gold shots for a while. And uh, arthritis can be a complication to other illnesses. It can be a complication to chicken pox, German measles, mumps, and uh, rheumatic fever. And it has many forms and many effects. And uh, if you have pain, just don't say, oh, well, it's arthritis, I can't help it. This is just the way it is. You need to get treatment for it. So I'm gonna close it. We don't have much time left. I'm gonna close it uh, here, and this gives you a kind of overview, but you need to see a doctor if you think you've got arthritis, and they can, they can prescribe a treatment plan that's good for you. So we'll close it here, and please join me next time.